Welcome back everybody here in Twitch chat and also on YouTube if you're watching this video later on over there for our fourth part of the War of the Spark set review. So far we have covered white, blue, and black, and we are now on red. This is a standard set review. We're going to be grading these cards uh, A through F um, or a limited grade um, you know, based on like the U.S. grading system. If you'd like to see the uh, grading system, if you're here in Twitch chat, you can just type exclamation point grade in a chat for the Google Doc there that they'll that will describe it all. And if you're watching on YouTube, you can um, just go ahead and uh, go to the description part of the channel and you can see it there in the YouTube description in the video description. So I have I have gone ahead and read through uh, it also for the other videos, but for these last three, I'm going to go ahead and uh, not read go back and read through the grades. Um, hopefully you can find them either spot, but we're going to be giving these cards grades A through F, or if it's just a common that's made for limited, such as on crop invader, then we'll just be giving it a letter grade. So without further ado, let's continue on with the red cards. We have on crop invader, two in a red, two, two, as long as it's your turn on crop invader has first strike, pay one, sacrifice another creature and on crop invader gets plus two plus zero until end of turn. So like I was just saying, this is a limited only card. Not so much for standard. All right, how about Blind Blast? Two and a red instant. Blind Blast deals one damage to target creature. That creature can't block this turn. Draw a card. Hmm. Also limited. All right, Bolt Bend. Three and a red instant. This spell costs three less to cast if you control a creature with power four or greater. Change the target of target spell or ability with a single target. So there are some kind of cool things you can do with Bolt Bend. Um, and it looks like it's <laughs> trying to say that instead of bolting my bird, you bolt your bird kind of thing. Um, but I'm not really expecting this to see standard play, though. Like, <clears throat> if you're paying full price at four mana just to play a spell that changes the target... That is a really bad deal. Like you basically have to have your creature with power four or greater, and then you're just spending, you know. So then you're spending one mana to like change their lava coil from lava coiling your thing to their thing, and that's that's pretty nice. Uh, like one mana, like that's pretty sweet. So no explosion has two targets, so no, it cannot change the target of explosion. Um. It's like, is this a sideboard card against removal heavy decks? Like, probably, like, removal heavy decks aren't going to have, like, their own things to, to remove. Um, you could play this against, like, you know, against, like, Sultai, change their hostage taker to hostage taking something else. You know, you can make them hostage taker their own creature kind of thing. Have you Vivian minus something else. All that kind of stuff. Um, no, ult Planeswalker ultimates do not, like, they make emblems do, to... They don't target. They don't have a single target, so no, you can't redirect that. Um, so this is like a, a very fringe sideboard card. Maybe I mean, would like Drakes want to play this main deck? Like probably not. Like there's just so many good cards in standard. I'm no, I'm just gonna go with an F with Bolt Bend. There's just so many good cards in standard. I I don't think this is making, um, the, making a deck. I think you'd rather just kind of have like the dive down, um, you know. Yeah, there are times like where you can, you know, certainly envis envision you have a Crackling Drake out, they have whatever creature, they Lava Coil your Crackling Drake, you change that to Lava Coiling their own creature for just a single red mana, and that's awesome, but that's just not going to happen too often. All right, uh, Bond of Passion. Yeah, you, you can, so if you can play this early versus Tempo Blue, well, early on, it's going to cost four mana early, like early in the game. You know, you can take their, have their Curious Obsession target your thing. But early on in the game, you're not going to have a creature with power four. So, Oh, did I say F? Yeah, I meant limited. If I said F. Yeah. Because it's a, commons and uncommons get limited grades. All right, Bond of Passion. It's six mana. Gain control of target creature until end of turn. Untap the creature. It gains haste until end of turn. And then Bond of Passion deals two damage to any other target. So Act of Treason costs three more mana to deal two damage to a target. That is just a limited card. <laughs> Burning Prophet. 
One red, one three. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, Burning Prophet gets plus one plus zero until end of turn, and then scry one. So this is similar to, um, like, there's the the blue bird that's like a one two flyer that get, gets plus two plus one plus zero until end of turn. This does have scry one, which is pretty cool, but it doesn't have any kind of evasion. Um, there's a lot of these cards that of these spell matter, non-creature spell matter cards in the is it colors. You know, like there's like we dragonauts also. This is just limited though. Um, I don't, I don't even think. So you're saying like mono red would play this. So you know, you two mana, you bolt something, so it's a two three, and then you scry one. I guess that's really not that bad. Okay. Okay. Is that better than, like, Viachino Pyromancer? No. Is that better than Steamkin? Certainly not. So do you want more two, two drops besides those in Mono Red? No. All right. So, yeah. An Adelie's Wizard deck. I guess I guess I could see something there. Like Scry One's okay. Like Scry, yeah, Scry One makes it do something. Um, yeah, I think that's I think the best situation I can think of is having Experimental Frenzy on the battlefield, and you get the Scry to avoid like having a land on top kind of thing. That's about the that uh, another person says the best situation I can think of is is it Phoenix to Scry off all the bad spells? Yeah. Um. Every cat, no, for every cast you scry one. Yeah, every time you cast. So it's a fringe bad card for a bad deck. Yeah, basically. Basically. So I'll I'll just give it the limited rating, but you know you may you may play against it in standard. So maybe it's like a, a D minus kind of thing. Chain Whip Colossus four R for a four four three and a red tar creature can't block this turn. That is another limited card. Um, Chandra Fire Artisan. Okay, so here's our first card that's going to see some standard play. We got two red, red, four loyalty planeswalker. Whenever one or more loyalty counters are removed from Chandra Fire Artisan, she deals that much damage to target opponent or planeswalker. Plus one, exile the top card of your library. You may play it this turn, and minus seven, exile the top seven cards of your library. You may play them this turn. So Chandra is really similar to Jace, being four mana, four loyalty. Jace ticks up, draws a card. Uh, this, you know, draws a card for a turn, basically. Um, and you know, Jace can do some milling and, and stuff. And but this has like the good ability of if they attack your Chandra or deal any damage to the Chandra, then you get to deal that much damage back to them. So that's pretty cool. Um, I I like this this Chandra. I mean, I, I think that the I think the plus one ability is, is getting a little underrated of you know it is you get to play that card so it does hit lands and everything like that so like any you know you can play the land you can play like whatever other spell yeah her ability happens when she's attacked yeah if she's attacked and is dealt damage uh then you can deal that much damage back to back to the opponent or to the planeswalker it would certainly be better if it was any any target where you could deal it to creatures also um oh yeah chandra torch of defiance was crazy good uh this card's worse than Chandra Torch of Defiance, definitely. But Chandra Torch of Defiance was like secretly, like maybe the best card in Standard throughout its time in Standard. Like a lot of people kind of pointed towards like Hazaret and stuff, but like Chandra Torch of Defiance was just in every. It was like in the best deck of the format for like fifteen, no, twelve for like twelve months straight, kind of. It was in like the all like the the teamer marvel decks and then after teamer marvels and like teamer energy um and then like after that it was in like the mono red chandra torch of defiance was like and like people just didn't talk about that card but it was like sneaky amazing anyway um oh yeah mardu vehicles yeah that, that deck played it uh where i see chandra fire artisan Anyway, getting back to this card, where I see this fitting in in standard, I kind of like it in the green red standard, the, the green red uh, decks, like the gruel decks, um, like the gruel creature decks. Gets some good card advantage there, where they're being pretty aggressive, where they care about that damage. Also, 
Um, I don't, I don't really see it in mono red aggro. Yeah. I don't really see it replacing experimental frenzy and like mono red. No, but I think in gruel, this fits pretty well. I think this fits well between Domri and the, both the green and the red gods. Um, it could just be a sideboard card in those decks against like control maybe. Um, but I think it, I think it fits like the four mana slot on the curve pretty well there. Um, I, I like it there quite a bit. Yeah, Liliana we had was an A minus. So I'm thinking I don't know. I'm I'm pretty excited about this, Chandra. I, I really like this this tick tick up. Is it a B? Maybe, yeah. Maybe it's a, a role player that sees play in multiple decks and also a common sideboard card. I could see that. I think I think Chandra's a B. Chandra's a B. Is she better than both Domri and Vivian for Gruul, Midrange, and Aggro? I think she's better than four mana Domri. I don't think she's better than three mana Domri, the new Domri. Is she better than Vivian? Probably not. But <clears throat> the Gruul deck has a lot of fives between the two gods and Vivian. And it has a lot of threes like rhythm of the wild and gruel spellbreaker and new domri it doesn't really have fours and this can kind of fit there it has like rekindling phoenix and this can kind of fit there also with the four um next up chandra's pyro helix one in a red it deals two damage divide as you choose among one or two targets if there are a lot of one toughness creature in the format you could maybe want this to try to pick off two things i'm just giving it the limited grade though because i don't i don't really see it being much more than just a limited card right now but that would be like the one time you'd want chandra's pyro helix but we have a lot of good two mana red removal speaking of two mana red removal chandra's tri triumph one in a red for dealing three damage to a creature or planeswalker and opponent controls and if you control a Chandra Planeswalker, then you get to deal five damage instead. This card's pretty solid. Is this better than Lightning Strike? Probably not. Like, don't you think you'd probably just rather have Lightning Strike most of the time? Um, but you know, like we have that. We have we have Lava Coil. We have Lightning Strike. I mean, I guess if you, if you're definitely playing a whole lot of Chandras, maybe you know, like this this does this can be like more copies of Lightning Strike. I don't, yeah, this is probably just limited to then. Yeah, because if you play Chandra, it could be decent. Like, you do get to kill Teferi with this if you have a Chandra out, right? You get to kill Nicol Bolas. So I guess if you do play a lot of Chandras, maybe. So so maybe like a D instead of a limited rating. Um, but basically there, you're kind of looking right around there. Cyclops Electromancer, 4 in a red for a 4-2. Whenever it enters the battlefield, it deals X damage to target creature and opponent controls where X is the number of instant and sorcery spells in your graveyard. So in your instant and sorcery spell deck, do you really want a 5-mana 4-2 that, you know, is it Ravenous Chupacabra, basically? Like, would you, would you, would you play 5-mana Ravenous Chupacabra in an instant and sorcery spell deck? And then, yeah, there is Bacon Bolt already so yeah you got bacon bolt cyclops basically so at that point you know the more cyclops electromancers you play the worse it is for your deck because then you have less instants and sorcery spells in your deck because you have cyclops in your deck instead um so it does it does kind of make your overall deck worse by just being in the deck so go unlimited demolish certainly limited you know, that's a card that's been printed a ton. Three in a red, destroy target artifact or land. That's not really a standard card. Devouring Helion, two in a red for a 2-2. Whenever Devouring Helion enters the battlefield, you may sacrifice any number of creatures and or planeswalkers. If you do, it enters with twice that many 1-1 one -one counters on it. I mean, you can just make one really big creature if you sack a bunch of other creatures 
this looks a whole lot worse than lumbering battlement where you can like lumbering battlement you can put them all on the party bus there and then you get them back whenever lumbering battlement dies this you just have to sacrifice them um yeah this is just another limited card Yeah, it's, so if you if you sack two tokens, so if you play like two mana, you play the one one goblin that makes another one one, and then on turn three you play this, you sack both those one ones, and you get a six six. Are you winning that game? Your opponent just plays a mortify or a cast down. Like is that is that like a, a good enough curve to win in standard? Meh. Not so sure there. All right, Dreadhorde Arcanist. Here's a rare. One in a red for a 1-3 trample. When Dreadhorde Arcanist attacks, you may cast target instant or sorcery card with converted mana costs less than or equal to Dreadhorde Arcanist power from your graveyard without paying its mana cost. If that card would be put into your graveyard this turn, exile it instead. So, got some. So let's see. We got a B, an A, and a D. <laughs> so that's spelled bad. That's pretty funny. Uh, from different people, uh, and then B plus, B plus, another B plus. I don't feel like this is a mono red card. I feel like this is part of the feather the redeemed um, heroic deck. Like when you're playing cards like Integrity, uh, they can you know be like one mana plus two plus two pump this thing up or you're playing like defiant strike that pumps this card draws a you know pumps this up draw a card and then you can attack and you defiant strike it again um or any anything like that um i think like those are like i think this it's like this can uh play those kind of things like if you if you do cast defiant strike for example, and integrity, if you cast them both, then this is four power and you attack, and then you can cast the intervention part of integrity and then deal three to something and, and gain three. Um, can you attack and then instant pump it and then cast the same spell? I don't think so. Because whenever you whenever you attack, you have to put this this trigger onto the stack with a target, so you can't like respond to that with that. So you would just cast your spell first. You just instant instant pump first, and put it in the graveyard, and then attack and get the trigger, and then get that instant spell pump back. Um, so you can do that. Um, yeah. So that's that's how you would order that. I could see this working in a Feather of the Redeemed deck, you know? I could see this just being another threat, like this, the Hoplite, and Feather of the Redeemed. Wait, did we did we pass over that Hoplite? Or is that... No, that's a red and white card. Yeah, never mind. That's it's not just a white card. Um, so, I, you know, I could see those being, like, your 12 threats. Um, and, yeah, like, this has to attack, but you're, you're trying to pump up its power anyway. Uh, and then you're also playing like the the white instant that um, gives your creature indestructible. So you know you can you can play that to give this indestructible, and you can recast that also with this for like the next turn to give it indestructible again whenever you attack with it. Um, I use I'm viewing the cards on Wizards website. Yeah, Sheltering Light. Thank you. Sheltering Light works well with this. So basically, I, I'm going to give this like maybe a a B. I think it could be a a car, you know, defining card in that singular highly played deck. Like that could be a highly played deck, red, white, heroic. Um, it could also not be, you know. So it's basically like B is the ceiling. But if if that deck makes it, Dreadhorde Arcanist Arcanist is is a part of it. So it could be a B. Um. And yeah, if you curve this into into Tajik, well, you may not have instants and sorceries in your graveyard really to cast, but. Yeah. So like B is like the the ceiling. So yeah, it's either B or F, basically. <laughs> so this is your your BF, basically. That's what we've that's what we've determined. <laughs> but it has has a very large range. Um if the deck makes it, it's a B. If it doesn't 
It may not see any play. All right, uh, Dread Horde Twins. Um, three and a red for a 2-2. Two -two. Whenever it enters the battlefield, a mass two. So you make a 2-2 two -two and another 2-2, two -two, and your zombie tokens have trample. I've gave... <clears throat> this is you know similar to other um, mass cards that we've had here. Kind of giving them the limited rating before see other what you know before we see otherwise this is another value creature if, if you do want it in like you know your value creature deck with like your prime speaker vanifar kind of thing it doesn't i don't think it's better than other things that we're playing in standard it doesn't seem to be um but for some reason if like you know red black zombies there's like a thing that you want this there is a little bit of potential um but i think it's just a limited rating i, I think i think that's where we're just going with this is limited rating it is a jackal and so that's pretty cool Jackals are cool. Um, you do get to duress twice with this card. That's kind of cool. You get to turn one duress, and then turn three, you're attacking with your Arcanist. You get to duress again. That's kind of cool. All right, Finale of Promise. XRR. I guess final grade for the Arcanist, I'm going B-. minus. Just I don't want to give it a... It's, it has the potential for B, so I'm just going to give it a, a B- minus to start with. But it has it has like a lot lower floor though. But I guess I never said my final grade there. B minus. Finale of Promise XRR. You may cast up to one target instant card and or one target sorcery card from your graveyard each, with converted mana cost X or less, without paying their mana costs. If a card cast this way would be put into your graveyard this turn, exile it instead. If X is ten or more, copy each of those spells twice. You may choose new targets for the copies. I don't know if there's a better way to word that first sentence, but I feel like there is a better way to word that first sentence that takes up four lines there. Um, <clears throat> does a mass trigger a Johnny's welcome? Yeah, if you're if you're putting in a new creature token. Yeah, it would trigger a Johnny's welcome. So we got a lot of different things on this. We got an F, a C, um, another F, a C plus, a B, another B going to be huge for phoenix i think arc light phoenix is kind of where you where you see this right like for for four mana you can recast either opt or shock and either discovery or charter course from your from your graveyard or i guess opt shock or radical idea any of those plus like um lava coil or discovery or dispersal or sorry, not Dispersal, Discovery or Charter Course, any of those sorceries. So for four mana, you get to cast two spells like that, plus you're casting the Finale of Promise. So for four mana, Finale of Promise automatically gets your Arclight Phoenixes back by itself and gets you to play, you know, one of Charter Course, Discovery, and Lava Coil, plus one of Radical Idea, Opt, or um, Shock. That's for just four mana, and you get you get it back. If you have if you have Goblin Electromancer in play, you get to do that for three mana. So that's like really big time. If you have um not discovery, sorry, just Oh, you cannot discovery because the, the card is seven CMC. So you can't just do Yeah, because not the dispersal part, but you can't even do the discovery part. Alright, well you get charter course in lava coil if discovery doesn't work. Um so that's four mana. And, and like I said, if you have Goblin Electromancer out, that's only three mana. That's three mana. Get your three spells. Get your Phoenix back for one card. That's pretty awesome. It's not a four of, I don't think, because it's not like you don't want Finale of Promise early. Like you want to have all those other cards first and you want to be able to put all those in there. But Finale of Promise could be like a one of that you can find uh, with like those cards. Um yeah, or Tormining Voice would help you out there. If you want to pay an extra one, you can get Bacon Bolt. Um, so, yeah. So I, I see it. I could. De I definitely see it as like a one of in the Arc Light Phoenix deck. There. Um, if you go, yeah, skewer the critics plus Wizards Lightning kind of stuff. You you would need X equals three. That's five mana. I don't know if you want it there. Um, I don't think it's far too situational. I think I think it is a, a solid one of in Phoenix. 
Um, so a solid one of in like a, a commonly played deck, that's like, that's a C. You know, that's like, I was listing like precognitive perception. That's like a C for me. So I think this is a C. Could it be in Grixis as a one of? Maybe, because like Grixis control, you're trying to get the game to go longer. You can cast Thought Erasure plus Cast Down. Um, or, you know, like Bedevil plus Lava Coil you know, kind of thing. So maybe Grixis as a one of, but probably not. Like, I don't think I'm putting this in my Grixis deck as a one of to start with. Thousand Year Storm, it seems awesome. Why can't you do Bedevil? Can't you do Bedevil as the instant part? You know, if you had like Bedevil and Lava Coil, like that'd be as, at five mana, right? Like, so it'd be five mana cast Bedevil plus Lava Coil, of course, at that point. Yeah, in Thousand Year Storm, this is probably great. Uh, yeah, like this is probably great in Thousand Year Storm. You know, even at like you know you spend six mana, you go, go get go get back your your four mana, you know uh, thing that's like discard a card, draw a couple, you know like whatever that red sorcery thing is. Get 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 your two treasures. Um, yeah. So if you were casting it at X equals ten, if you were doing something like where you're ramping a ton, and you were playing X equals ten. If you're doing it like plus Teferi plus Wilderness Reclamation plus this or whatever, I don't know what. But like if you're doing X equals 10 or more, you can do, you know, what spells do you really want to play? Um, uh, Star of Extinction. You can copy that twice, destroy three of their lands. There you go. Um, it does. I don't think it works with, with Explosion and like the X spells. I don't think it really works there. Um, but no, it's so like mass manipulation. I don't think it, it really works there. Um, you could, if you're also, if you're a, a Jun deck that's ramping, you could play this casualty of wars a bunch of times, destroy like a bunch of lands plus other like artifacts, creatures, enchantments, and planeswalkers, just wipe their whole battlefield and destroy a bunch of lands. Um... That's something you could do. You could, if you're also that Jun deck, ooh, you would get planar. Yeah, you get plain white celebration. Now you cast this thing, because you get to choose twelve of these. You gain four life twelve times. You can make twelve two twos, or you know any any combination. You can return a bunch of permanent cards from your graveyard to your hand. Yeah, this thing. So yeah, if you want to be Jund Ramp deck and try to play that at CMC 10, you get your planar celebrations in there. Um, oh yeah, play your Vitu God Gazi land, make a bunch of a nine nines. Where's the Vitu Gazi land? Uh, oh, oh, it's awake. Is it awaken? Awaken Vitu Gazi. Yeah, awakening of Vitu Gazi. Yeah, so then you make a whole bunch of nine nines. <laughs> Or you can mill out your opponent. You can do a lot of things if you're actually casting it for Exus 10. You can do a lot of things. They are legendary. Lame. Um, yeah. You can cast a bunch of Ig yeah, Ignite the Bacons. Um, yeah, you can do that. Okay. Um, so, Finale of Promise. I'm giving it a C. I think it's... Uh, I, I see it as like a one of... Uh, for the most part, I see it as like a one of in Phoenix decks, you know, so a one of in like a highly played archetype kind of thing. Um, but, you know, it also has some really high end jank potential, which is cool. All right, Goblin Assailant, one and a red for a 2 2 Goblin. That is a limited card. Goblin Assault Team, three and a red, four, one, haste. Whenever it dies, but it won't counter on target creature you control. Another limited card. Grim Initiate, red, one, one, first strike. Whenever it dies, a mass one. That's a limited card. I mean, <clears throat> this card, though, if you think about it, like, think about uh, if if you're playing, like, the you know, like Mardu Aristocrats kind of thing. If you're playing, like, a red deck where you want the sacrifice theme or like a red black deck like a judith priest like judith priest with like honestly could maybe play this 
you know, you're sac- sacrificing your creature. You know, like it's kind of like Hunted Witness, except for instead of, um, instead of making a life linker, you just make a regular one one zombie kind of thing. Yeah, so it's it's Hunted Witness in red, basically. So if you're you're playing red black, you get your Hunted Witnesses um, also. The, the problem is, is like whenever one dies, you make a 1-1, one, one, but then if you have another one that dies also, you don't make another 1-1, one, one, you just make a 2-2. Two, two. And you'd rather, in that kind of deck, you'd rather have two 1-1s one, than a 2-2. Two, two. So it, it is worse than Hunted Witness in that respect. It is better originally with having First Strike. But. Yeah, the free, uh, Priest of Forgotten Gods. Like, you're, you'd be playing this in like... Uh, like the Judith Priest deck that I have um, with like Priest of Forgotten Gods, basically. Um, Heartfire, one in a red, deals four damage to any target as an additional cast to, cost to cast the spell, sack a creature or planeswalker. At first, it's like, wow, two mana deal four damage to any target. That's great. That's better than Lightning Strike. But then you got to sacrifice something also. I think that's just a limited card. Honor the God Pharaoh, two and a red sorcery. As an additional cost to cast the spell, discard a card, and then you draw two cards and amass one. So this is Tormenting Voice that costs an extra mana, but you have a mass one. And Tormenting Voice is hardly played as it is. I think this is I think this is worse pay, spending an extra mana to make a one one. I think you'd rather have the tormenting voice. That is a limited card as well. Ilharg the Razebor. Three red red. Six six trample. Whenever Ilharg the Razebor attacks, you may put a creature card from your hand onto the battlefield tapped and attacking. Return that creature to your hand at the beginning of the next end step. Whenever uh, Ilharg the Razebor dies or is put into exile from the grave, you may put it into its owner's library, third from the top. Whew. This card looks awesome. Yeah, gruel monsters, absolutely. Give me this raised boar. Let me put even like putting the uh, putting Ronus into play off this thing is awesome. Putting you know Galta, but you know just all sorts of really cool things you could put into play. But the thing is, is this is the kind of card that even though it works really well with like janky, very expensive, big creatures, you don't have to play it with those. You can just play it with other good um, powered creatures. And everything. Um, oh, the gods are unaffected from hostage taker. That's a good point. Yeah, they try to hostage taker your raise boar. You can choose just to put it back into your library instead. That is that is awesome. I I'm call, I'm going A. Let's go A. Ilharg the raise boar. This card's an A. This card's awesome. Love it. I really want to. I really like playing this with. Um, uh, what's the uh, with Rhythm of the Wild, um, yeah, playing it with Riot, get it, get it in here with Rhythm of the Wild. Um, get even like get your turn one Llanowar Elf, get your turn two New Domri, get your turn three Raise Boar. Even though it doesn't have haste at that point, you can still play it on turn three, and you can have it out there and get ready to go attacking on turn four. I think this is this card could be a format staple. Yeah, I think this could be, you know, like a rekindling phoenix kind of card. Um, yeah, I think this is an A. I could certainly be wrong with that, of course. Um, but this card looks awesome. This this just kills people so fast, and like I think this is I think like you know gruel, like gruel gained a lot in this set I think. I think this is like a four of that you play with the green um with the green god eternal Ronus is a four of. You know, you you attack with your raise board, you put Ronus into play, you double the power of each other creature you control. You're attacking with for twelve for twelve trample with the raise board plus, you know, you're also attacking with this five five death touch thing also, and then the Ronus goes back to your hand. Um yeah, that is nice. And those are just like cards that are just good on their own too. Um, yeah, I love this raised boar. 
Uh, yeah, you can go with the Andres Forerunners for the flavor win also. Um, you think this is this card's, this set's Rhythm of the Wild? Well, this, these two certainly help each other out. Like, Razebor is like a kind of card that makes Rhythm of the Wild a lot better. Because, uh, like, Rhythm of the Wild, you're taking a turn off just to play an enchantment. But if you if that enchantment gives your raise boar haste that also puts another attacking creature into play that makes up for that turn you took you took off certainly so i don't know i really like it yeah it also makes the ill harg uncounterable does it really go in other decks besides gruel maybe not so should this be an a minus likely my yeah, this this should probably be an A minus, but it's, I mean, yeah, it doesn't it doesn't put them into play. Yeah, it just attacks with them, but it can't attack for a whole lot, and it can kill people really quickly. I think the Gruel just has a lot of good good cards now. I think it really gained a lot. Like, you know, Gruel, you have like your good cyborg cards with like Cinder Vines and stuff like that, and um, I'm I'm pretty high on Domri in like this kind of deck also. I think that extra mana is really important and like Domri like uh, fighting. I, I really like this Domri. I think this Domri is really nice. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I think I'm, I'm pretty high on Gruul right now. Um, but this Raise Boar is really sweet. Yeah, it works really well with ETB effects for sure. Um, you know, definitely there. <laughs> you learned your lesson about Gruel from last set. Well, Gruel has kind of turned into one of the better decks right now. It took a while, but it has turned into one of the better decks. Um, it is good. At, yeah, it is good against Wrath effects, right? Like, you don't need to have your creatures on the battlefield against the Wrath effect. So it's hard harder to get two for one kind of thing. So this is probably not an a a like Hydroid Crisis Kaya's Wrath Mortify. It's probably an A minus. I want to give it an A because it's just really cool, but it's probably like an A minus. Is this better than Skargon and Hellkite? I think so. Yeah, I, th I think so. But uh, yeah, um, you know, it, it's a lot harder to kill. It's bigger, um, and you don't need to spend more mana on it to to get its thing going. Um, like six six trample is is really big. That kills people. Pretty quickly. So since it's it's still a five mana big dumb creature that dies easily and produces no value until it attacks. It does have keyword big. Keyword big's pretty nice. We'll see. We'll see. I'm giving it A minus. There we go. Invading Mantagore, 5 and a red, 4-5. When it enters the battlefield, a mass 2. Yeah, that's just going to be a limited card. Um, Jaya Venerated Fire Mage, 4 and a red for 5 loyalty Planeswalker. If another red source you control would deal damage to a permanent or player, it deals that much damage, plus 1 to that permanent or player instead. And then minus 2, it deals 2 damage to any target. So it's... It does say another red source, so it does not include itself. So it, it is dealing only two, two damage. Is this like a card you're going to really want to play in like your red your red damage deck? You know, like are you are you going to want your like chain whirler to attack for four first strike instead? Um, you know, for five mana, I'm not seeing it. With cavalcade of calamity, so caval cavalcade of calamity like that will deal two damage each time. Um. Yeah, this looks to be a limited only card. I'm not really seeing it for for five mana. Um. You know, it does make like your shock. It does turn your shock into lightning bolt. Your wizard's lightning into dealing four. You know, all that kind of stuff. 
But when you're when you're playing all those things, you know, you're playing like red deck wins. I don't think you need your five mana card like this. Here. Yeah, too expensive. So it's an uncommon, so giving it the limited only rating. Or the limited rating. Alright, Jaya's greeting, one in a red instant deals three damage to target creature scry one. It's not bad. Like is it better than lava coil? Like, probably not. I mean this this could be a card after after rotation. You know, Lava Coil rotates out. I think Lightning Strike is rotating out also. Um, maybe you want this. Like, the Scry one's kind of cool. Like, maybe this is, like, a, a card in a in a control deck. I don't think right now. I think right now it's just a limited card. But maybe after rotation, after we're losing some other uh, one in a red damage cards. Yeah, Strike's an M19, so that'll, that'll rotate out then. Coil is... Ravnica... Coil is not rotating. Never mind. All right, Lava Coil is not rotating. Well, that's tough for Jaya's greeting then. Yeah, Lightning Strike could come back in, in M20. It could. Could be reprinted again. Cranko Tin Street Kingpin. Two red, one two. Whenever Cranko Tin Street Kingpin attacks, put a num put a plus one plus one counter on it. So it will attack as a two three. Then create a number of 1-1 one, one red goblin creature tokens equal to Krenko's power. So whenever you attack with it, it's a 2-3 that would then make two 1-1s. One, Those two 1-1s one, are not attacking. Um, like, I think the old Krenko, yeah, they would make, like, haste goblins. And, like, you know, Legion War Boss makes, like, tokens that attack and everything. Um, I do feel like Goblin War Boss is going to be better than this. You can, like, you know, pump up Krenko's power with, like, a pump spell um, or, you know, like an Ajani, uh, pump it up and then attack, and then you make more 1-1s. One I don't feel like this is going to get really played in standard too much. Maybe if there's, like, a goblin deck, if you want it. Um, so why not just play a bunch of war bosses and Krenko's? Um, yeah, like the Heroic deck with Feather. I don't think the Heroic deck with Feather wants Krenko. I don't think. I don't know. It's it's kind of... I basically just don't see this doing a whole lot. So the Heroic deck, you're already, you're already going to have your 12 creatures. I think you, you know, you're already going to have the Arcanist and the, the new Hoplite red white card and we're gonna have feather um you don't want to play a ton of creatures in that deck uh besides that you may like i think you'd want other creatures besides krenko um so like an aristocrats deck where you want to make some one ones to sacrifice maybe maybe that's where you want krenko you do have to attack but you, you can't like if you have i mean i guess it does it does work well with um with priest of forgotten gods right you have priest out you attack with krenko before blocks, you make you know you make two two tokens. Before blocks, you can sack those two tokens, and make your opponent sacrifice a creature, kind of thing. Um, yeah, Colossus can make this this thing can make six goblins with Colossus. It's just so fragile. It's legendary. Um, Okay, so y'all are saying that, that it could go pretty well in that. Um, the Boros Heroic deck. It does work pretty well with Aurelia. Aurelia Exemplar of Justice. Yeah, Aurelia pumps up the power too already. You know, you, know, you curve this into Aurelia. And then you get to attack with a 4-3 Trample. That also makes four goblins. That's really nice. That's really nice. Krenko into Aurelia is a really that's a that's a nice curve right there. Okay. I mean, is that really a perfect world? That's just playing your three mana creature and then your four mana creature. 
you do obviously you need to like untap with your creature um but that's pretty good uh i think you can stack it i think you could mentor it with a two power thing i think you could stack it and do the mentor first and then put the counter on it kind of thing um and so it's really good with Samet's Sprint. What's, what's Samet's Sprint? Here we go. This thing, target creature is plus two, plus one, and gains haste until end of turn. Scry one. That is awesome. Okay. I didn't, I didn't, I haven't seen this card before. That is really awesome. So, you know, four mana, you know, turn four or whatever. Like when you have four mana, you play Cranko. You Sam it, sprint it, make it a 3-3. Three, three. Attack, you make it a 4-4, four, four, you know, because it has haste right then. You make it a 4-4 four, four, and then uh, get to make four goblins. Like that's that's pretty big game. Like, four goblins is a lot. Okay. All right, I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it. Okay. So, yeah, it could definitely work in that, that red-white heroic deck. You know, if you have a really in that deck and Sam it, sprint and stuff like that, the red, red-white heroic deck. Um... Yeah, so I guess it, it does work pretty well in that Heroic deck. All right, I'm in. I'm in there. It's really good with Heroic Reinforcements. Ooh. Well, I guess it's already attacking. Those other goblins you make don't get to have haste, but... Um, all right, so I'm going to go with the C. I'll go with the C then. A powerful card that sees play in a fringe deck. Yeah. Sounds like a Cranko for a C. All right, y'all. Y'all had me upgrade at Krenko. It's not, yeah, it's not perfect. It has, you know, downside. You know, it's a three mana creature. They can kill it. It's very easily to die, you know, dies of shock or whatever. But it does have some pretty high upside. I like it. All right, Mizium Tank. One red, red, three, two, trample. Whenever you cast a non creature spell, Mizium Tank becomes an artifact creature that gets plus one, plus one until end of turn, and it has crew one. This is just an F. Yeah. Just. Yeah. I think this is just an F. Um, hey, foxes. Nahiri Stone Blades. One red instant. Up to two target creatures. Each get plus two, plus zero until end of turn. I don't think we're playing Nahiri Stone Blades in the heroic deck. That would be, like, the only place it could see fit. Um, two mana for your spell is kind of a lot. We already There's already better spells and stuff. You know, we got a lot of one mana spells. Um, this is a... This is just a limited card. You think Mizium Tank is super good? So, what do you want to do with Mizium Tank? I guess you want to cast a bunch of spells? I mean... A couple of people say they like the Mizium Tank here. Yeah, so it's in Phoenix, of course, not Mono Red, definitely. But so, like, if you're playing it in, like, that kind of deck, like, when, like, I I mean, I like Arclight Phoenix and Crackling Drake, you know, and Goblin Electromancer, those kind of cards more. Do you really, do you want something else that, that's just going to make all your other cards worse? Like, this Mizium Tank's going to make all your other cards worse. Yeah, like, I don't think it fits in Phoenix. Yeah, I'd rather have Enigma Drake. Still, if you want to play Drake's kind of thing. Um, yeah, Phoenix already has good threats. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't like this Mizium Tank in Standard. You have to, you know, untap with it, which, you know, it's, that's easy. But, you know, then the next turn, then you play one spell, and it's a 4-3 trample. Play another spell, it's a 5-4 trample. I don't know. I'd rather just kind of start playing my Crackling Drakes and things like that. All right. How about Neheb Dreadhorde Champion? Two red red, five four trample. Whenever Neheb Dreadhorde Champion deals combat damage to a player or planeswalker, you may discard any number of cards. If you do, draw that many cards and add that much red mana to your mana pool. Until end of turn, you don't lose this mana as steps and phases end. Hmm. 
So are you are we playing our our four mana five four trampler that we get to untap with and then attack and then hit our opponent and then after that then we can do some rummaging, discard some cards and draw some cards. Don't think that's good enough for standard. I think standard you're gonna want your creatures to do be a little better than that. The best thing with this this thing is again with with like is this something we want in our rhythm of the wild deck with Ilharg, and so we put we put Naheb into play with Ilharg. Um, like that could be a thing, but it's it's just not very good on its own. Um, it has you know pretty good stats at five four for four. But there's a lot of good cards in standard, and I think I'd rather have like I think I'd rather have Chandra than that card in my deck. I think Chandra is gonna just help you win more games, you know, by getting you the extra card advantage as your four mana card. I just like Chandra a lot more than Neheb. Um, yeah, if if we had Madness, Neheb could be really good with Madness. Um, Right, yeah, there's yeah, there's also the the four beta uh oh, what is that card? I've played that card quite a bit. Uh three four legendary creature with haste that whenever you attack you make a bunch of mana. You don't get any draw discard, but um Yeah, if this thing had haste, like yeah, if it had haste, but then is it too good if it has haste? I don't know. Rada, yeah, Grand Warlord Rada, that's right. That card. So Neheb, I'm giving I'm giving Neheb like a D. I think I think it could be a card that you'll sometimes see played in standard, but kind of underpowered overall. So that's why I'm that's where I'm feeling with Neheb. I'm thinking a D. Why are y'all saying what about Narset? What do you mean? What about Narset? Okay. Okay. I, I could see. I could see Mizium Tank being a D too. D as well. If you want to give Mizium Tank a D of like something you'll maybe see sometimes in standard. Um, yeah, I, I can see Tank being a D also. Actually, there we go. Oh, just saying. What about Narset? Is a meme. Okay. All right, Raging Crunch. Two and a red, four, three. Can't attack alone because it is in the limited pile. Samet Sprint, red instant target creature gets plus two, plus one, and gains haste until end of turn, and a scry one. That's a lot of stuff for a single mana. Uh, definitely like the scry and the haste, and then like that's a not a bad buff either. Um, you know, this is, a, this is a C, I think. Like, I think this is... Kind of like a card for you know it's just like a card for that uh heroic deck and this this does seem like a pretty nice pump spell i don't think it's like a four of maybe like it's probably more like a two or three i don't think it's a four of but having scry is nice and the fact that it costs one is really important whenever you're playing dreadhorde arcanist uh that you can you know recast it like even if you have nothing to pump the arcanist whenever you attack with arcanist you can still just you know cast it because it costs one. So that gets one mana is an important trait to have. Um, yeah, we gave Ilharg an A minus. All right, Sarkin the Masterless. Three red red. For five loyalty planeswalker. Whenever a creature attacks you or a planeswalker you control, each dragon you control deals one damage to that creature. And then plus one until end of turn, each planeswalker you control becomes a 4-4 four, four red dragon creature and gains flying. And minus three, create a 4-4 four, four dragon creature token. So normally we're going to be doing, you know, spending five mana for our uh, five for our two loyalty planeswalker that that also comes into play with a four, four, right? Like we're mostly going to be playing, doing the minus three right away. So we, we have our two loyalty planeswalker, we get a four, four dragon. And then whenever a creature attacks us um, or the planeswalker, then our dragon deals one damage to them, to that creature. 
if we had another dragon on turn four, uh, you know, the, then their things take two whenever they attack us kind of thing. If we want... So if we want to do the plus one and make our Planeswalkers dragons, um, that's only until end of turn. So, like, the Planeswalkers won't be dragons during their turn whenever they're attacking us. We won't consider that. Um, so, yeah, each dragon is definitely good. Yeah, very, very good on an empty board. You know, empty board, um, you know, going minus, make a 4-4. Four, four. And then they kind of have to deal with the 4-4 and deal with the Sarkin, because then the next turn you can tick up and then make your Sarkin a 4-4 also um, and attack with it. So you can attack for, like, 8 the next turn. Um, Dragon's Egg may be playable with this. Ooh. Yeah, it could be. Um, yeah, or... Yeah, if you already have Planeswalkers on the battlefield, whenever you play this, you can tick up and then start attacking with them. You know, if you have, like, Domri uh, kind of thing or, like, the other, yeah, other Planeswalkers, you play, yeah, playing Kiora. Hmm. So not bad, not bad. We've already seen that, you know, five mana spot is is just so much competition there. What like how much play is Sarkin actually gonna see? I don't know. Like where like you know it's it's definitely not bad on an empty board, but even even on like kind of a gummed up board, you can just make you know it's a five mana four four that leaves you the planeswalker around also. So like that's you know it's not so bad. Are you gonna play this in any deck that doesn't have other dragons? If you're like not playing a dragon deck, you know if you're playing like a green red. Green red deck with like Domri that can add mana, where you could potentially play this on turn three. You know, turn one Landor Elf, turn two Domri, and then turn three, you know, you add mana and you play Sarkin. Is that like something you're gonna be doing? Like, would you rather like are you playing this over the the gods and over your Vivian? Um. Oh, there. Gorum says there. You could play this with Jaya. Uh, yeah, Jaya. That your red sources deal damage to a permanent deals plus one. So then, as long as your dragons are red, each dragon would suddenly deal two damage to that creature if they want to attack us. That makes it. That starts making it really hard to attack. Kind of thing. I don't know. You you can see some potential there. You can certainly see some potential there. This one's a, a difficult one. It's not like one that I'm like super thrilled about, but it's it's certainly a solid card. Um, yeah, if you can give your dragon death touch, if you play this with status statue or whatever, like in response, like trigger status my dragon and then give it death touch. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I see it. I see it being a C. I like that. It's a powerful card that could see some play in some French decks. I think a C is a, a fairly good rating for Sark and the Masterless. Hey, what's up, Branch Walker? Yeah, these are going up on YouTube. Yep. We have already finished with white, blue, and black. We're finishing out red and green now. All right, uh, Sarkin's Catharsis. Four in a red instant, deals five damage to target player or planeswalker. That's a limited card. Five mana is too much for that effect. Spellgorger Weird, two in a red, two, two. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, put a one, one counter on Spellgorger Weird. There are so many of these like small creatures cast a bunch of non-creature spells, buff them. It's just they just keep printing a ton of these. There are so many in the set. I'm just going limited again with this. It's like how you can't play all these in the same deck. I mean, you do get counters. Um, but yeah, I, I do like this better than the tank. 
Yes, I do like this better than the tank. Because, you know, you get the counters. I Like, that is, that is better. You, it's not trample. I guess that's a big thing. It's not trample. And this is non-creature. And that is instant and sorcery. No, this is non-creature also. So they're both non-creature. Never mind. They're both non-creature. So... And then weird, yeah, I guess you can't, yeah, you could put weird and proliferate decks. I don't know. This still seems pretty janky. All right. Upgrading to a D. Then over just limited only. You can play it like, you know, with Planeswalkers. Get, get your counter. Um, but yeah, I guess, I, I guess maybe a D. You want to build your spell gorger weird janky deck. All right. All right. To Balt. R rakish investigator rakish instigator it's definitely instigator not investigator <laughs> i was like investigator okay instigator and then i guess rakish 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 i don't know um two and a red five loyalty your opponents can't gain life minus two create a one one red devil creature token with whenever this creature dies it deals one damage to any target <clears throat> rake ish okay so this is probably just a, a sideboard card for mono red against decks that gain a lot of life right like that's that's just like what it's going to do right like that's just going to be a common s sideboard card for mono red um yeah like that just seems like exactly what what it's going to be i don't really see it doing anything else um i do have like a very common sideboard card like cinder vines from like the last set i do have that listed as a b so because that's just a card you see a lot this while this is a a common sideboard card it's basically just gonna be for one archetype like cinder vines can go in a you know goes in a bunch of different decks kind of thing this is basically just for mono red um so i think that so that's why i kind of want to just name it as a fringe sideboard card because it's it's a sideboard card that just goes in one archetype um so i think i'm going to go with a c with this as a sideboard instead of a b as a sideboard card because it's not it's, it's not like a common sideboard card that will go in a lot of different decks it's just a a, a sideboard card for one deck um yeah, if life gain shows up in force, it could be sprinkled into a main deck. If life gain is uh, shows up in force, but not likely. It's real good against my Bull of Citadel Abzan deck. No. All right, to Balt's Rager, <clears throat> one in a red, one two. Whenever it dies, deals one damage to any target, and you can pay two to give a plus two plus zero until end of turn. So we have the uh, the devil that's the one mana one one uh, that dies it deals one damage to any target. Is it worth spending an extra mana to give it a second toughness and that ability? Probably not. That extra mana is is a lot. A for artwork. Yeah, yeah. Going going with just limited. This is a limited card. And turret ogre. Turret ogre. Uh, three and a red, four, three, reach whenever turret ogre enters the battlefield. If you control another creature with power four or greater, turret ogre deals two damage to each opponent. It's kind of difficult to read, turret ogre, but that's eh, a limited card. All right, so red, our best cards, we went with... Um, Ilharg the Raised Boar at an A minus, and then Chandra at B, and maybe Dreadhorde Arcanist at like B minus. Those are our best cards there in red. All right, so if you're watching this one later on on YouTube, hope to see you for the next video. We got green coming up after this, and then we'll go over to multicolor and artifacts.